Hey crafters, Big D here, and this week we are doing part two of our sci-fi fortress. This week we're going to be focusing on the magnetization and the paint and detailing of the final part of this project. So after this video, when you follow these instructions, you should be able to make the first part of the full fortress, which are these battlement walls. For a full set, I suggest you make at least six. Uh, six to eight is really where I think the set needs to go. Um, but your mileage may vary, so you make what you need. Um, I'm going to make six. So let's uh, cut the chit chat and get right to the video. All right, folks, so we have got our magnets. So these are just, uh, they're like the size of like an American nickel. Um, I think they're a three quarter inch or they might be a two centimeter. I don't know what exactly the size of these is, uh, but they're, like I said, they're about the size of an American nickel. Um, and you can get these in packs at uh, Joann's or at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Uh, they're just I think they're designed for making refrigerator magnets. Now the biggest thing you gotta remember about magnets is that yes, there's one direction that they will adhere, but the other direction they repel. So I mean this is they don't want to go together. So you wanna make sure you keep the sides straight. So what I have found is easiest to do is with these kind of magnets. Since you're gonna want all the magnets facing the same direction in your walls, and I'm gonna be making six of them all together. So we need 12 of these. We take our 12 magnets, and to make sure we know which side is the side we all want facing the same way, we lay them out on a table, and then we just take a little bit of paint doesn't have to be fancy just so it's very obvious one of the sides are all the same and that way when you're laying out your magnets into your project you know they're all facing the same direction. And that's really, really critical because the last thing you wanna to have to do is go back in and take one out or disassemble a portion of flip the magnet because you didn't check it ahead of time. Not that I've ever done that, but <laughs> it can happen. So, let the paint dry, then make a decision. In this case, looking from the back of my pieces, the color is always going to be facing to the left. So from the back, the color is always facing left. So if I look at it from the left side, the color will be facing out. If I look at it from the right side, it'll be the non-painted side. And every single piece has to be done the same way for your set. So, get your magnets, paint one side, let it dry so you let them get straight. Then, you're going to take your hot glue and you're going to be gluing them into the corner where the upright meets the bottom, not the angled one, but the upright one. So, you want to put it in this corner. You're just going to put a spot of hot glue. On the bottom surface, a spot of hot glue on the upper surface. And like I said, because I want the color facing in on this side, and make sure it is flush with your wall. This is going to be the contact point 
where the walls stick together. And then you do the same thing on the other side. But instead, you're going to have the paint facing out. paints out on one side and the paint is in on the other side and every single piece has to have them facing in that exact same way we're gonna let that cool we're gonna get the magnets in to the other pieces that we built and then we're gonna get some cereal box and cover up that side and start detailing these so Get your magnets, get your magnets glued, and we're going to come back to detail. Okay, crafters. So, as you can see, we've taken our cereal board strips, and we've covered up the edges to make a nice, clean edge on, the, on our pieces here. And with the magnets underneath, they come together real nice. That nice, flat edge for them to seal against each other, so they're going to make a nice, impressive piece of terrain just by the base look now you may have noticed I've also I forgot to do this on camera uh, but at the top of those popsicle sticks that uh, we put up I took some scraps of popsicle stick that I used for some deck planking and I'm just glued them gently to the back of the posts uh, just to make sure that they make like a railing so it looks like a nice you know a safety railing on the top of our uh, battle mix there so you don't We've uh, got our railing, we've got our sides on here, and now we're ready to start detailing our pieces. Now, you can go super fancy, and uh, when I start doing the other pieces in this series, I'm gonna do some fancier uh, detailing. But for these basic wall strips, we just wanna have some basic shapes and whatnot on these so that just to break them up so they don't look so plain. So you're gonna need some granny graining and some more of that cereal box. We're going to take the granny grating. I'm going to take the standard granny grating. Uh, it's a two inch by two inch square minus one square. And you notice I've cleaned off the edges. Um, I've measured, and for standard granny grating, this is going to be a 12 by 12 square square. So 12 by 12, clean up the edges. It makes a nice piece of floor tile. The thing is, you're going to want to prime this with your Krylon or your Rust-Oleum plastic spray before you glue it down. You're also going to want to prime here before you glue these down as well because you're not going to be able to get paint down underneath. So what you're going to do is you're going to take these, you're going to cut out three of these for each wall section you built, these 12 by 12 squares. You're going to take your Rust-Oleum and you're going to prime them. And then once we prime this, then we'll glue them down just using a little bit of gel super glue. So, cut three of these for each of them. Then, you're gonna cut some more of that cereal box cardboard, and you're going to cut six pieces for each section of wall. It's gonna be an inch and seven eighths wide, and it's gonna be two and a quarter inches long. And what we're gonna do, is we're gonna build some plating on the front of our wall. So again, you can use standard tacky glue or you can use hot glue. If you do hot glue, you want to put it on really thin. So you're just going to take a little bit of the hot glue, spread it around. And then you're going to affix it. And you want to have it not on any edges because you want that little bit of a lip all the way around that's going to add the the texture and the detail so we've got our we've got our plating pieces here on the front now we're going to take a little bit of 
of white glue and just put a thin layer here and then we're going to take some really fine sand um it's a really fine fine grit sand just to put a little bit of a texture there as well to make it look like raw concrete that's been textured for walking on um and then we're going to go black bomb this so once we black bomb it we're going to use our gel super glue and put our three panels here that we've prepped already down on the on the front part here and then we're going to talk about our paint detail so we will be right back all right crafter look at this this is black bomb we've got our grating on there nice and firm glued in place and you may notice i added a little extra detail i have to give the lady dragon a little bit of uh, props here she was like, you know, those plates look a little plain. You gotta do something to break them up even a little bit more. And I agreed with her. So we went and took some small sequins and glued them in place and then re black bombed to make uh, some rivets on those steel plates. So even breaking it up more, really adding some more interest. This is gonna make this piece even pop better. So now we've got our very fine sand texture here we've got our walk plates here we've got some plates in the front here so now we're ready to detail this we're ready to paint uh, but the problem with concrete is that it is still a very plain series of colors if we try to use a brush on this we're going to see too many brush strokes for a major paint coat uh, so you're going to want to use sponge brushes on large flat surfaces um, and we're going to use some sponge stippling. But the first step we're going to do is we're going to just take a gray primer and from 12 to 18 inches away, we're going to do short, small bursts and just kind of dust the entire piece with um, a gray uh, to, to break everything up. And then we're gonna come back with a darker gray and start sponge brushing and, and sponge stippling. So we're gonna get this turned gray and then we're gonna come back with some gray paint, uh, just simple craft paint and start detailing up. Okay, so here you're gonna be able to see this dusting of gray. So we didn't go for perfect coverage, we just kind of went for a dusting. There's still some black showing through, it's not fully even, and that's what we want. Uh, we just kind of want to make it darker, uh, a mix of dark and light. So we'll take this set aside, and we're going to go over some techniques here. So we've got our piece, and we've got a nice palette here to work with. And I've gone and gotten Apple Barrel. This is pavement. Uh, it's a dark gray. You guys have seen me use this before. It's dark, almost, well, it's, it's supposed to look like asphalt. So it is a dark, dark, almost black gray. And I've gotten some pewter gray here, also from Apple Barrel. And these are the primary two colors we're going to work with. So, we've got a sponge here. And we just want to strike at our surface. So you can see, we're not going for a heavy coverage here. We're just trying to break up some of the lines here. And with that back and forth motion, 
we're adding streaking and again adding some nice interest to the way to face this piece is gonna look now the second part is you want to get a piece of foam just a rough tear a torn off piece of foam and you want to get some of that pavement and you just want to stipple it on there We're going to finish going over the piece and then we're going to come back with some metallic paints. All right, so now we have our nicely grayed and streaked up pieces. Look at like these concrete walls. But now we've got a couple pieces of metal here. And so what we want to do is we want to just take some dark metallic tone paint. I'm using. Uh, Let's see, this is uh, the Martha Stewart uh, Dark Steel Gray. Uh, so just any sort of a dark, moderate metallic. You don't want like a bright, shiny silver. And you just want to, once again, just rip most of the paint off and just kind of gently brush at your metal surfaces here. Just to show where some of the paint is worn off. And you can do the same thing with these steel plates. Now when you're doing the steel plates, to add some interest, since you've got your streaks going in one direction you want to do your metallic streaking just going down but at the opposite direction and again the goal here is you're just trying to add some visual interest to the pieces you're not trying to make it look like a huge amount of exposed metal, but just wear over time and weathering. Pieces have weathered and starting to show through. You could also put some rust on if you wanted at this point. If you were looking for a more of a rusty look. Alright, there we go. So we're going to let these dry and then we're going to come back and we're going to do the last bit of our weathering. Uh, so we'll be back as soon as it's dry. All right, crafters. So here we are. It's dried. It's got that silvering on it. It's nice and gray. We just want to put a little bit of weathering on it and now it's fully dry. So for this last step, since I don't want to put a liquid wash on it because I'm afraid that parts will peel or the cardboard will get all warpy. What we're going to do is we're going to actually use some artist's charcoal and we're just going to rub it in the seam. Now you could use like weathering powder, like a modeler's weathering powder and kind of get this same effect. But you're basically just trying to Come across your seams. Come across your surface a little bit. And you're planting some charcoal here.
And then once you've got a bit of charcoal, you just want to gently take your finger and just, just rub it a little bit in there. And you'll find that it'll collect into the lower areas. It'll collect around your rivets. It'll darken the overall tone and mute some of the colors a little bit. And as you can see, you get this really simple and really nice weathered effect. Then you just take your matte seal, give the whole thing a spray. And there you have the first part of our defensive fortress. These are perfect for your 40k battles. Look at the size of that so you can see where the fence comes up on the front end. So you got cover from up here. It's tall enough that you can sit a vehicle down here and have it out of line of sight. Uh, you could use this for a futuristic role play situation. There's so many uses for this. It only takes a little bit of modification. Instead of doing these metal plates, you could do some brickwork on the front and you can turn this into a medieval. Get rid of the plate here and put some uh, uh, shish kebabs or uh, other types of planks and make it look like a wooden palisade. So it's very versatile. But as you can see, this is easy to build. I built the two of these about an hour a piece to get them from start to finish. Uh, I could build, I'm going to be building an entire set of these. I want to build six to eight of them um, to go with the whole set. The next piece we're going to do is going to be the conjoining towers, the ones that are going to work as corner pieces so these guys come together and look like a outpost. So that's what we're going to work on next time. But until then, get a few of these made and We'll see you. Remember, people, epic your board, epic your game. This is Big D, and we'll see you next time.